नमस्ते गुड इवनिंग ऑल द डिस्टिंग्विश ट्रैफिक में ट्रैफिक में उसको सर्च करें आई शुड मेक अ कन्फेशन वेरी बिगिन एंड आई वाज टू कम हियर विद माय नेम दिस लास्ट सेवेन इयर्स आईपीएस कॉन्फ्रेंसेस एंड आईपीएस Sometimes makes me believe it is a useless slogan, and I will always be hesitant to agree to go in. But I stop saying yes to such events because I really believe that maybe the temperature is not risen enough. But I am very happy to see so many people sitting together in a very different. <laughs> You go make your presentation, put up your, give your paper, and then do a disappearing act. Pass through the city, see meet friends, take on other programs for the next two days, and then again disappear. Come back. Maybe if you are a grad student, you come to director certificate. If you are a professor, you don't ask the grad student to director certificate. <laughs> But to see itself gives a lot of hope. I think the day we have conferences and says, how do we look at non-Indic based knowledge systems and give them some opening to our thinking in India? I think that will be the day when we can all look back and say, I work in India. So that's the only journey for us. But the journey is begun and we want to have a wonderful space. Just a few hours ago, I was with many students of this. I also kept other engagements in case. And uh, we were talking about Indian knowledge systems there. Talking about Indian knowledge systems of this is like going into the lion's den and saying, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but I think it is important for us Lions also do the like vegetarianism is part of it. And so I did the risky job of going there, and it's fascinating that so many young people were actually willing to sit on a Saturday afternoon and look at something very serious. I say this with great amount of responsibility. That it, it has taken us so many years to discover. This journey, but it's always never late. But it's better late than never. But in some sense, we've all been living it in our own ways, but not having the pride to say that we understand it today. Some of the hesitation to disclose it, the air, and to be public about it, was possibly holding institutions back, individuals back. I don't want to mention the name of the institution. There was one institution in India when I was wanted to teach my leadership course. I did a day to day invited me to teach. And in my syllabus, in the mandated reading of the Bhagavad Gita, they said, I will be kind of reconsider this because it will create a problem. Surprisingly, in the Ivy League where I taught the same course, they actually celebrated the fact that we were talking about Bhagavad Gita. It is strange the way we were responding. I'm not talking of a decade or more ago, but fast forward to today. There's a new kind of energy, a new kind of spirit, and my day job, as some of you in this room might be aware, is to be overseeing the capacity building needs of the entire government of India. And what fascinated and impressed me to take on this role was the order given to me, the order created to establish us, the new commission set up under the Honorable Prime Minister himself. I don't even know of any previous cabinet orders that still have the openness and willingness to state it. I have opened it as they did. Saying that we need to give us at India's state capacity from a civilizational lens and embed all our work the civilization of the DNA of this nation. So I thought the first time 
might do at least. Being a policy analyst, being in this space for a long time, nearly 40 years now. It is very heartwarming to say that the government has the willingness, the courage, the openness to say that the state needs the capacity driven by civilization. A nation which always makes state, as we are at a here, we all talk so much of the Rakashastra, we talk so much of it. But the problem when most of us talk, or when we write, or when we we are also emotional and passionate that we are so strong in what we say that sometimes it only sounds emotional but less evidential. And therefore most of the world ends up dismissing us, saying that you know what, you all to be out for having So that's a very nice proxy for not wanting to invest intellectual energy on it. Or the other extreme is to romanticize it so much that we, we we package a product which doesn't deserve the existence of the And then when people deny its existence, we say, see, you're all anti so and so. So I think what the major difference when I come to conferences like this is the spirit of academicians who, I'm sure, value intellectual integrity more than anything else, sit down and say, we would like to seriously talk about it, discuss it, spend time publishing papers. I think that gives not just hope, but a sense of purpose for this nation itself. So I would like to congratulate all of you. And uh, when Dr. Panaji is telling me that close to 90 papers have been come and presented and uh, And I think that's a rigorous process to select. And so I think uh, we should not even worry about publishing in so called journals which don't understand this. We should create a journal which will celebrate what we are doing. So this, I do this all because management is a very wide sweeping world. I think India shouldn't even be talking of management. India should be talking of leadership. Because that's what we give to the rest of the world in this space. So managing is they just end up managing us and they get managed. management. But it's time for us to throw away any apologetic consideration for ourselves and strongly and proudly contribute to the global thinking in this space. And we have made a small beginning in the capacity building country. We've got a mandate for inspiration. It's called the Mission Karmiyo. And our mandate is very simple, and that's what gave me joy, that the state has decided that it should seriously look at this. Though it looks very simplistic in its mandate, and I'm going to stick to public HR, public HR and public HR management. Uh, that's what I'm working on. And possibly share unashamedly self market the book I just released in the movie two days ago. If I wanted me to do it, so I would do it. Please talk about it. Manage a simple Karmachari Bhav, Karma Yogi Bhav, say Karma Yogi, Karmachari Bhav, say Karma Yogi Bhav. That's what Prime Minister took place. He said, both Asana and Akam, 15 feet away in the Every civil servant should stop thinking of himself as a public servant. And don't in our country, if people think they are public servants, that is a great contribution. <coughs> and here the Prime Minister telling us, I don't believe in just their thinking as public servants. They have to actually go beyond it and think as Karma Yogis. And it's very easy to use this word for reconstructing it in a practical way in implementation level. It's not easy. You know, each of you can write a paper what it should look like. But come to my office and make it happen. Make an officer who is considering it a burden to walk into office at 9.30 in the morning and come to what time he wants. And then there's always a set of people who go home at 7.30 in the office, also set of people who go to watch at 5 o'clock. It's both types of people. How do you inspire them? How do you shift the mindset of 20 million people with a clear outcome that is measurable and demonstrable? And a Prime Minister is so outcome focused that he can't be just carried away with slogans and statements. He wants measurable outcomes. So, for one minute, how do you get a person who's anyway getting his salary? It's so difficult to dismiss a person for non performance. In a country where performance itself is not being defined for a single service, you know, not even about it. They don't even have a KPI. So, we don't know how to measure it. And you have to end up telling this person. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You should have neither the spirit of worship nor the spirit of enjoyership. Was it, is it I think possible? I would say in my life openly, the kind of limited knowledge I have, things around me, coming from a civil society background, coming from living with indigenous tribal communities most of my life, suing the state several times, and then suddenly finding myself inside the state. <laughs> Just was a difficult, difficult journey for me. But it also offered me an opportunity to see things differently. And maybe that's why the Prime Minister wanted me to join. So I feel that we have done something I share about. The second mandate he gave us was, how do you get somebody to think beyond rules? Because management is always rules. That's why I use the word leadership specifically. To go beyond the rules that we all craft and frame for our existence. To start thinking of role. You know, I was in my mind drawing the parallel three years ago. If Arjuna had looked at Krishna and said, the rules of the game are never charity, just drive the horses. That's not taking the guys. Possibly we need a head of the But both Krishna was willing and Arjuna was willing to also accept another role that he had, the role of a mentor, the role of a guide, the role of a the role of God, etc. So what we are supposed to do is shift mindsets from a rule-based approach of the civil servants and the legal citizens to a role-based approach. And getting us to appreciate role charity is the power and strength of, in my opinion, as scriptures. You know, this, this dharma, the very concept of dharma is to appreciate the innate sense of role and what is right in the role that you perform. So it is not about, it is not a unidimensional definition that I think I am related to. Obviously there are different ways of interpreting it. But dharma of a spark is dharma of a spark. Dharma of an elephant may be system, I do know. But in the context in which we exist, in the roles that we play, our dharma is defined, and that's the beauty of it. And as a charity, the dharma might have been to keep our dharma safe, but as a mentor, they have a role to play. And the civil servants, Prime Minister said, is this role is to bring this nation, that's all. Rashtra Nirmani in Kappa. And that is very evolving concept of being. And that's why Indian college systems actually gave the framework. I didn't have to go outside. I, 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 till recently I used to teach at Bhagavad so I was just taking the CV, whatever I read about. Just recently, the giant last month. Uh, in the industrial labor relations too, where we used to try to understand the future of work, how do we look at what kind of workplace is going to be in the future, the big economy, and stuff like that. And from that, what does public HR look like and what is our to lead with you? And the third mandate he gave was, world is so uncertain, the Bani world, Buddha world, whatever terms of reference we use. But the beauty of our scripture is it always prepared us for uncertainty. And so beautifully allowed us to experiment. And if you don't feel like an escapist, you can always play around the world of Maya the way you want it to. But theoretically objective enough in standing aside and trying to say, what is real, what is unreal? And without getting affected by it. That gave us so much strength. Even in a Vyavaharic world, it gives so much strength. And here we were saying that civil servants have to operate with uncertainty. And therefore, their training and the capacity should be to engage in lifelong learning, which enables them to perform in whatever the situation is. For the first time, we were called upon not just to make our civil servants competent, but to embrace humility and vulnerability to accept that they may be incompetent and therefore start becoming competent. Just imagine what is what is Bhagavad Gita, at least actually, just without product for me, is what Engaging myself in lifelong learning, and that cannot happen if I start thinking and evolving more. Without humility and the vulnerability of not knowing, you cannot even engage on the journey of practicing self inquiry. It takes a lot of courage to ask a single question to Allah and He told us who am I. It's very easy to say it. But it's such a high profile insecurity question. If I was asked who are you, and then so if you're not a person, don't take your salary from tomorrow. Then you will realize who we are. So we all go through this crisis, the crisis of identities, crisis of affinities, crisis of affiliations, and without it, we can't even exist. 
And here we are, we have to prove it. So to me, what I want to share with this other audience is something which I would like to challenge, to provoke. And it took us maybe two years to put something together. So I reached out to a lot of friends in the Indian knowledge system space. And every time they would give me young, but not an operational toolbox. Gyan can get a Google to Maybe chat GPT, you make a concept better. But how do you do it? Because that's what we need to find out for our students. Our students don't have to be more told to emotionally appreciate what is needed. But they need to be told how operationally feasible it is and what can they do with it in real life, in the real world that you are you and I existing. Until you can crack that code, this is just going to be a conference product. It is not going to be a real life immersive experience for all And I think conferences like this have to spend time and energy in trying to convert, to take that step of creating that data, which will make it productive and useful and useful. So we tried out in a small way, and I know for sure it's not perfect. And in our country, and I, I'm a very candid person, so I think you might have trouble with inviting me. Is we get a lot of pride in criticizing. And I used to do that too. Criticize government as outside. Without realizing we are one of the cheapest governments in the world. Our government operates with great constraints. Despite all the criticisms, we did conduct an election of an unimaginable size and volume and proportion. But we never appreciated any of I don't know how many times in a year we even had the thought to say thank you to somebody who actually did something for you public service. It could be a bus driver or a bus conductor or a train that you travel in to walk up to somebody and say, Radio. But then we expect the government to come. And there we want them to be visited. But when our students come close and say, the professor, your class is brilliant, we can have a class. When the evaluation comes 4.9 on 5, they will return to that. But we don't realize that even those people need it. I'm saying all this because that's something I discovered. It's easy for me to be outside and think out of wish. But get into the system and learn to be into the system, understand the constraints they operate in. I salute the civil servants today. All the people who are going to be able to do that. To that shift from performing efficiently and collectively to performing dispassionately, discrimination, education, and discipline that Indian scriptures talk about. So that is going to be brought about this for the career of competency framework. A completely indigenized Indian public HR framework. Which for me the proof of the pudding was when I shared it with friends all over the world. When I shared it with the corporate sector CHROs, I started receiving phone calls from private sector in India saying, Can you please give it to us? We want you to bring it our framework too. Which means the proof of the pudding is <laughs> And what did we say? How did we do it? We looked at the Outside the scriptures of India. You are doing a lovely thing. I have five minutes This is a passionate subject of the history of the Levisman project. We looked at what does the scripture say? What is it that's practical? What is deconstructable? What is actually trainable? Because we want this to be a habit by just by doing it over and over again. What can be made into a skill? What can be made into a competency product, a learning product? which are offices, because they are mandating 50 hours of continuous of learning every year for civil service. We are now going to mandate that if you don't acquire competencies, demonstrate acquisition of competencies leading to betterment of your performance with your material now, we might, it might affect your postings and promotions also. So there's a lot of incentive essentially also done in this game. And so we have to think hard and deep. And we looked at what the head of government, the prime minister has been saying for the last 10 years. What are the, what are the tweets? Thankfully, we have large language models today. We can analyze what are we, what is he talking in monkey bar? What is the public HR in the world is looking at? We look at different countries. And we realize only four things. And we are only given a simple mandate. It should be trainable. This Indian knowledge product should be doable. Generic enough that nobody can criticize. It's Indian. It's knowledge. And it is ours. Everybody can take pride in it. So we also said something else. We said it should actually lead to data. It should be measurable. When I commission an impact study, whether it is in 
at least an association, if not a causation, a correlation at least, whether what we are doing is shifting mindsets. So we, the competences that we need are three things in government. One is a behavioral competence. We have to shift from becoming from a karmachari to a karmio. But karmachari requires a lot of functional competences. How do I write a policy mode? How do I write a cabinet mode? Because we have inherited the legacy of the British to the point where not just instruments of colonization, our mindset has got so colonized that we have to work so hard to decolonize. And you cannot, if you have not used the education system in the first place, and with any new becoming such a politically sensitive subject today, people have forgotten what NEP contains, and they only focus on who brought up the NEP. That's a tragedy of our country, but I'm glad I education institutions are moved away from it. So we looked at it and said, there are only four pledges we need to make to make this country great again. To make India into the bar that we are all seeking. And first one is Vikas. Even to use Indian words, we have to worry about with South India or etc. North India or etc. The West India or etc. It's not a tragedy. And I come from Karnataka. Groomed in Kannada, I used to write books in Kannada and articles in Kannada. But why can't I take pride in India in Indian language? It doesn't matter when Maharashtra but it takes a lot of effort to do that without mission institutions. The first thing we said is development. And how do you define development for an appreciation of Indian thinking? If we can go for 16 hours, so Indian system is not just over our stanzas and providing us. It has been a way of life, right? From the food we eat to the governance we had to the spirituality we can speak about, India is everywhere. And so we said development also should be something in India. Indian development was investing on building human and social capital. The Sudama and the Krishna would go to the same classroom and you can't make a better example of equity in the classroom. And how do you make it happen in real life? So we said development has to be inclusive, it has to be equitable. How do you do it? And what are those things that we can draw from our own cultural inspiration? Second, we said, is gun, not in a negative context. Pride in Bharatiya Bhasha, pride in Bharatiya Sanskrit, pride in Bharatiya Parampara, right? Just take pride in what we have. Right? You are not dressed to a language, you are talking to a... We can be very good in English. I am very good in English, I know. But does not mean I talk to you bad in something? I can be equally good in my current hours. Or maybe you know, I am trying to become better in But I am trying. My sincerity of learning is 100%. My grammar might be 100%. People in Delhi forgive me because most of their grammar is also better. <laughs> It's not that, no, it's all right. So third, we said, this India never celebrated rights. That is a 1900 product of us. We celebrated Kartar. To the point where in the Mahabharata we say that if I am not useful, if one man has to be sacrificed for the village, sacrifice. If the village has to be sacrificed for the district, city, country, sacrifice. So, the sense of responsibility was celebrated and not the sense of rights that the Western world celebrates. I'm not saying rights are wrong. I'm not saying we should not respect constitutional rights. But my responsibility to bring in a great nation is every single Indian. So, we said, Kartavi. And we have defined it. How does it manifest in public service? And in the last, we say, Ekta. We can't simply draw the map and draw the map with Akhandabad. Akhandabad is here first. In every sense of the world, we are all one. So, Gita can celebrate Samatom and Ekatom and all that. Why can't we live it every day? Try it every day. Within five IITs, there are problems. Two doctors' prescriptions in our country, there are problems. We need to talk to Just celebrate the spirit of oneness. We can't just talk about Allah in a monastery. We got to live it in a daily life. To the extent we can. And so we said, what does oneness mean in a practical way? You'll be surprised that one joint secretary in the same ministry will not talk to the next joint secretary in the same room. Sometimes they don't even know both are the same ministry. How is that thing? This idealization is part of the community economy. So how do you get that spirit of one? And we said from this Char Sankar, if you have achieved it, every individual should have the Char Guna. The first guna that we're talking about is this part here. So if you want to talk to Bhagavad Gita, give it. Engage in the spirit of understanding yourself. If you don't understand yourself, you never understand the other. And first you have to understand the other to recognize yourself in the other. So we decided that first we teach how to understand yourself. Only then you will do self-enquiry, only then you will engage in the economic learning. 
In the process of lifelong learning, we grow to understand because we focus on three things, public work, work, the workplace, and the work person, the workforce we call it. For us to understand the work, workplace and workforce are not separate. Right now it's by time, separate, keep it separate. But has it engaged in it selflessly and passionately, at some part of them it's all virtual, you know that there's no work, workplace or workforce, it's just one. And we hope that will happen. It may never happen, but like somebody will work with it. It's the first bonus for the hand, and we reconstruct it. So if you can't understand yourself, you'll never know why you drive public service. You'll never know what is supposed to be. The second we said, is Sahakarya. It's no longer about it. You look at the entire, even if you look at the way when the Mahabharata, the Kauravas, the Pandavas, all of them had allies. To fight a war between two cousins, you have so many allies on this. <coughs> it's just a concept. You have to have stakeholders. And all stakeholders matter in building a great country. And that is exactly what India Wisdom talks about. It never separates people from the other. It always brings together. It doesn't fragment, it unites. So we took the principles of Indian knowledge, not just the anecdotes and the flashy examples, but we said how do we actually make it part of the paradigm of governance and change the state? And if we can change the state, imagine the power of the this nation. So whether you like it or not, I like it or not, the state is the principal organ of transformation. You can decide to change the curriculum of IIT or not try to work for it. You resist the fact. So you resist for some time, but then at the end of the day, we all put the state in its wisdom. Decide what a citizen should live or what they should live. So then we use that. And so we talked about how do you collaborate, how do you learn to work with each other, how do you respect each other, and the compassion that comes, the karuna that Buddhism, Jainism, Buddhism, all of you talk about, and how do you generate it with the other and work with them. The understanding self cannot be separated from understanding the other. And we said, how do we do it? And that is not how we And the third we said, oh, it's nice, but we do it for job properly. A Kshatriya has to fight a war. Like Krishna says, the dharma is to fight. A civil servant's dharma is to learn how to govern the state. And therefore, Raja dharma is important. And we teach him functional competence, how to run the state. So that's what we have done. And it draws inspiration from Raja dharma. Whether Yudhishthira's conversation with Bhishma or what Kautilya has written, all Rama's instructions to Bharata. What is it we can take from that and say, how do we institutionalize in the context of today? That our product has to be contextually relevant. When you're talking about AI and ML, I can't talk about Ramayana or Mahavata alone. We got to make it realistic for today. And we decided it should be contextually relevant, but never lose sight of cultural authority. That is the filter we put. And the last good, he said, is Swadharma. That is what India is all about. He said, your Swadharma is Seva to the citizen. Raja Seva is Swadharma. And how do we do it? And we have reconstructed all this. And I am proud and happy that this will be the institutional framework from which the state we have been in the state of Already state programs have been created. And over time, maybe it will take five to ten years, and the benefit of the call given to the Honorable Prime Minister is again extraordinary. Jan Bali Dari, in the space of public policy, which is formally trained with the highest level of governance. Even citizen centric governance is not high enough. Citizen centric is state being concerned about the citizen making which is centric to him. But Jan Bhagavadi is the willingness to partner without Sanatari Kalkan with Bhagavadi. The state is the most institutionalized form of violence. Whether we like it or not, that is the structure of the state. Mitigating this violence is what is good government talk about. Keeping on reducing and alleviating it. Asymmetry of information is the strength of the state in which it operates. And that's what gives an asymmetry of power. But when you say partnership, the Bible is saying reduce asymmetry of information, asymmetry of power. Make the state and the citizen come together to constitute a team and to build a team. And for us, all of this is based on Bharatiya team. And my earnest request all of you to conclude. And I'll just give you one example where we're trying to practicalize, institutionalize, and scale it up. If the academic talent in this room, the academic intellectual potential and capital that they are sitting just here, forget the rest of the country, if all of you can join hands with us, help us make these things better and better. It's never perfect, it can never be perfect. But each of you can look at it. 
pick everything, make it better, build the knowledge base, which we can all use to build a great nation. I think that is our tradition to follow. That is the real message of And that is the message of Vishnu Guru can take it like that.